Hello all. So today it's sunny right now but we're supposed to have rain. Uh, this afternoon, tomorrow, the next day, all the way through till Sunday. That's about five days of continuous rain for California. Whether it happens or not is a good question. The satellite seems to be down. We can't see what's coming and uh, people are just sort of guessing what the weather's going to be here in California. So, at this point, let's go right over to the news. It's not good. Okay, here in the U.S., the Senate and the House and the President of the U.S. are all attacking U.S. food stamp assistance. In other words, you get about $230 uh, a, a month on food assistance when you can't afford food because there's no work. and uh, So they're going to cut an additional 8.7 billion dollars in food assistance. There were 46 Democrats and 23 Republicans that voted for this. Uh, a lot of people don't even know which party is the left and which one's the right because they're so much the same. They work for the corporations and the corporations right now want money lots of it. So this la latest program is called the Heat and Eat program. When this program started years ago it was for one dollar of heating assistance equaled eat food stamps. So if you had an assistance on heating of one dollar you got food stamps. Now what they decided to do to make it impossible to get food stamps is now you need uh, $20 in heating assistance before you get food. Okay, let's look at this a little bit more. But before we do, just I want to remind you that there isn't a single cut in any of the Democrats, Republicans, or the President's own m income of, of uh, finances. And this, these finances are coming directly from the government. Is it time for us to cut their assistance? They get all free food, all free clothes, all free housing, all free transportation, and they get many, many trips around the world all year free of charge. I don't think they pay for anything that I can think of. Let's go into the details. 1.7 million people will lose $90 a month that means that they're only going to get four dollars and thirty cents per day for food. Do you think that a, there's a single politician out there that would be able to eat on such a small amount of money? Okay, we're on a little hike today out in kind of the sticks. Though you'd never notice, know it with all the garbage around. Uh, so anyway, we have an angry bee around us here. Okay, this next bit of news is really not too good as far as the planet goes, but I want you guys to see it. I have so much news to talk about, I don't even know where to start. But let's just go right over to this one. Ninety whales in Florida wash up on the beach. Then, uh, 1,122 riddly, riddly turtles uh, show up dead on the beach in India. Then, 400 dolphins show up on the beaches in Peru. A large number of albatrosses are dead on the beaches in New Zealand. Do you think there might be a problem with our oceans? Okay, we had a wasp's nest or bee's nest to deal with, so we came to a different place. Thought we'd leave them alone, since I didn't feel like entertaining them with stings. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Obama has to make a decision over the XL pipeline very shortly, and I know pretty much what he's going to do. He usually goes with the corporations and the, uh, you know, who, who's ever paying the most money 
wins in this country, the U.S. That's going to be a shame because it's money wasted on old technology that could have been spent on solar panels put on roofs in the cities in the U.S. You, you, with that kind of money being spent, you could easily have made the footprint of the U.S. much smaller spending money on solar panels and wind generation than you could on pipelines and fracking. Uh, you know, the, the technology's there, the, the, uh, the supply of solar panels are there, but there's nobody paying big bucks. So it looks like the fossil fuel industry will win again. So they say if the U.S. continues to frack as much as they're doing and go ahead with the Keystone Pipeline, that that'll be the end of the planet because there'll just be too much greenhouse gas in the air. Uh, if we do end up with the uh, XL pipeline supplying dirty oil from Canada, it will make the U.S. the world's dirtiest supplier of fuel. That's, uh, you know, and, and that, and you know how many dirty countries there are around the planet that couldn't care less about the environment. Uh, the U.S. used to be one of the greenest countries in the world. We really used to care in the 60s and 70s. But during the 80s, it all turned around the other way. And the old greed thing came in and people saw money was far more important than the planet. Doesn't seem like things have changed much since then. So the sun's back out. And I don't know whether we'll get actually some rain, some winter weather or not. Uh, we sure need some. February is our second wettest time of the year and it's our second half of the winter where rain actually is counted. As of right now, basically there's been no rain the whole winter. I don't know if February is going to turn out any differently or not. Let's hope so. Okay, one of our watchers uh, had a comment on our last video. Let me show you. What he says is true. Everything in the video was made with oil or some kind of fossil fuel. And I'm not disputing that. What I, what I was saying in that video was that we have to use everything or have the smallest footprint on the planet that we can have. Let me go to the board and show you what I mean. Everything we wear, eat, and live in and get around on uses up the planet somehow. It's called a footprint. So if you have, if you ha if you live in a multi-unit building, walk to the store to buy your food, take mass transportation, a bicycle or your feet, and use cotton clothing, you have a small footprint on the planet. But if you live in a gigantic house on a huge piece of property, and you drive everywhere, and you live far away from your work, and you just use a lot of stuff, you have a large footprint on the planet. So the bigger your footprint, the more damage we're doing to the planet. The whole idea with environmental conservation is to use the smallest footprint you can get away with. And it's up to the governments to try and get it so that the people will make smaller foot footprints on the planet but there is a problem with this is that our population is now growing exponentially and we're going to be so high about 10 billion people in the next few years that you can have the smallest footprint and just sheer numbers alone will probably counteract any of the environmental actions that we all take but it doesn't mean you give up you try your hardest to not ruin the, the planet that you live on. It's the only one we have. That's why we have to try and make the smallest footprint possible. And you just don't use an excuse, well, everything around you is made of fossil fuel, which is true. But hopefully everything around you is leaving a smaller footprint than maybe some wealthy people that think that they don't need to con conserve because they are of the affluent and don't need to do it. But in reality, people, we, we're all gonna lose this planet. And if we lose it, 
and it suddenly snaps and and the weather changes to where we have 400 monar winds or rain that comes down at four inches an hour or something like that we haven't got a chance our crops will wash away uh, you won't be able to get any of the um, precious metals and that sort of thing out of the ground the air will be too dirty to breathe um, it's just obvious that uh, just try and live closer to where you live uh, transport yourself the least with fossil fuels that's probably the biggest area where your foot grows is transportation and food you're not gonna believe it but there's that street sweeper again okay Michael well thank you for your comment and I appreciate all the comments that we can get it gives a uh, conversation going and maybe just maybe we can actually oh probably not though huh all right well the sun is out and I've got a lot of things to do and I'm kind of running out of time sometimes on these videos so we'll just call this one good and we may make another one on Thursday or Friday or something and uh, I appreciate all the uh, comments uh, pluses minuses uh, sharing of the video whatever you can do and uh, if you choose to uh, subscribe I appreciate that all right all we'll let you know how the weather turns out here in the dry California till next time